Ugh, David Goyer's little dirty Goyer fingers on everything. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes, it's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, Deadpool 2 drops trailer number Deuce. Ooh, it's a stinky one. Or is you, it? You get it. You understand <laughs> that reference. Gotham is making The Joker, I think. All right. I don't know. Okay. We're going to talk about this. I We don't watch the show, but I want, I want to talk to somebody about this, Mike, and you are my outlet. Okay. <laughs> we also saw Pacific Rim Uprising in 4D, if you will. That's right. We put an extra dimension on that robot movie. That's right. And more. So yes, it's, in, a, it's been busy. In 4D, did you technically give it the D? Is that the fourth D uh, in, that, in that movie? Chris, no. You're Sorry, awful. The, too many <laughs> Deadpool trailers bring out the worst in me is what I'm thinking uh. here, so... Uh, this show but, brings out the worst in you, Chris. It is true. It does. It does. Uh, it's, it's been a long weekend. I, I've got to say, we did go out of town to watch this 4D movie, or the D-Box seats. Uh, so I, I've been literally on the road since Friday at like 5.30 p.m. and got back uh-huh. at like 11 p.m. last night. So it was a <laughs> two full days of traveling and just experiencing what I call the Cincinnati and, and the <laughs> snow weather that we're getting here because we've had a cumulative over two feet of snow this week alone and it's gone the next day and I'm very confused. I don't know what season it is. <laughs> I, I don't know what's happening. Something tells me it's it's March and this is the madness that we're getting with our March madness, <laughs> but, but I don't know. Uh, Chris, it sounds like you got some updates on our March Madness uh, superhero uh, MCU uh, uh, brackets. I, I do. I do. I was trying to lead into it without like... I don't know. I didn't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing, Mike. I'm, I'm on this energy root beer that we just talked about. I don't know what's going <laughs> on. But we have our March Madness um, bracket going on for Super Slate, the Marvel March Madness for the Cinematic Universe. This is the, for the Infinity Gauntlet. This is for the jewels, Mike. And we started <laughs> off with 18 movies, and we are now mm-hmm. down to the final four. Can you guess which four those are? Well, I don't have to guess because I'm looking at it right now. And I'll They're you know. on the it screen, is, son of a bitch. It is It is uh, Black Panther uh-huh. versus Guardians of the Galaxy, number yep. one. And then we have the OG original Iron Man uh-huh. versus Captain America Civil War. And, man, that is um, – that is a that is a fight there for sure, especially considering um, Black Panther just crossed the threshold and became the number one uh, grossing domestic superhero movie. So, I mean, I don't know if those box office dollars are going to weigh into this fight, but man, I think uh, it's I think I might put Black Panther over Guardians just by like a notch, just by a notch. Okay, and then I think the Iron Man. Um, Civil War one's a little tougher. Uh, I'm sad uh, that I don't see Winter Soldier in here because I think that that still might be my favorite of all of them. But, I mean, Iron Man started it all, but Civil War was just kind of, that was the uh, really the second Avengers movie that we really wanted. But I don't know, Chris. What do, what do you think? Who do you think is going to take it all? I, I am actually very surprised in this results because as of like two days ago, um, Thor Ragnarok was beating Black Panther by by quite a bit of a margin too. Uh, Black Panther has come back and, and taken this, but I and it has totaled the most votes. But I mean, I think Black Panther versus Civil War, Mike. Which one do you which one do you choose there? Um, I like a lot of the cast of Civil War. We got Black Panther for the first time in our new Spider Man, and the airport battle scenes just fantastic. But Black Panther is really really down to earth. I think it's going to come down to Black Panther versus Civil War uh, is what I'm feeling, but I could be very, very wrong. You know, it's funny. If we want to go into semantics just real quick before we jump into the news, I think if we're talking a bracket for MCU movies, so if we're talking the spirit of the MCU, you know, what that really is, I would think maybe Civil War should take it. Now, if we're talking just overall, just really good, awesome, choreographed action movies, 
uh, with superheroes in them, I think I would lead towards Black Panther. But like when I think MCU, I'm thinking all these characters showing up, crossing over, fighting each other. I mean, that that's Civil War for me. Yeah, I mean, it's te- like I said, it's Avengers 2.5 because of all the characters they put in there. Yeah. And um, I, 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 I don't know. I would agree with you. I, we have three origin movies here. Guardians Origins, Black Panther, and Iron Man, but then we have kind of a culmination of, you know, pre, I guess, pre-Infinity War here a little bit, uh, minus the Guardians, so I don't know, man, this is this is a tough choice, like, when we, the first round was pretty easy, right, I mean, you can knock Thor the Dark World out very, very quickly, but <laughs> how, how do you get down to these four and choose which one's the best, it's... Yeah. It's very, very hard. But next Sunday, so this this bracket, these four will go on for a week. And next Sunday at noon, um, on April April 1st, we will have the last week of voting for the last two movies. So your votes matter. Your votes will come in and choose who goes into the final round. And I'm really excited yeah. to see what comes out of that, Mike. Yeah, so Chris, if people want to vote, what do they need to do? They can go to SuperheroSlate.com slash vote. You don't have to register. You don't have to make an account. You just click on the movies right there. You can do it on a desktop, your phone, anywhere you have internet access. You can go here and pick uh, your favorite movie of the battles. It's that, really easy. That That is pure bliss because I went to a, a restaurant just for lunch yesterday, and I gave them my phone number, and they said they would text me when my table was ready, but they said if I wanted to see my spot in line, I had to freaking, I would have to download an app just to check my spot in line for this one restaurant I'm, I'm going to, and I was like, uh-uh, none of that. I don't want to download or register for anything, so you don't have to do anything. Just go vote, superheroslate.com slash vote. That's right, and we've opened it up where you can vote once a day in this last bracket because... Sometimes you want to come back and check and add another vote. So tell your friends to come back and vote. Vote as many times as you can. I want to see who wins yeah. this, Mike. Yeah. I'm Chris, really anxious. You want to know how easy it is to vote? I literally just did it. You I did just it. did it. So you, I have voted, we'll, and we'll see how that goes. I won't reveal my secrets. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it next week. Okay, I, I can see the results, so I know who you voted for, but that's okay. <laughs> I won't tell anybody. Uh, but that's that's really cool. Um, that's I, I like it. I mean, I, I have to agree with you. We went to a hotel in Cincinnati over the weekend. And you have to to get Wi-Fi in the hotel without paying. You have to create an account nope. through the rewards app. No, nope. that's Wi-Fi. already way that's already way too much. <laughs> and I was you like, think what? Of a pa- you got to think hell? of a password attached to an email address, and then you know, a couple days later, you're gonna have to be unsubscribing to a newsletter. And then there's probably like three newsletters that you're attached to because there's like, oh, the member updates news newsletter. Oh, just like the special offers newsletter. And then there's like the normal like username newsletters, and you gotta unsubscribe to them all. It's just ridiculous. Too many check boxes. Uh, it's too much. It, and just for hotel Wi-Fi, which should be included when you pay the first time. Exactly. Ugh. Anyway, well, that's <laughs> that's the March Madness I'm having. I'm adding more shelves in my room for my IKEA mic to put up more pop vinyls because I have a problem, and I will admit I have a problem <laughs> on this podcast. Uh, I have most of the Avengers ones now for Infinity War. It's quite a collection. I really like the characters in this. Um, if you're interested in, in checking those out, Mike, I recommend it. Some of the some of your favorite characters are going to be in there, pop vinyl form. I, um, I kind of want – because I know the pop vinyls have a very kind of specific dimension and size. I would love it if just the Infinity Gauntlet was a pop vinyl. Like I know like you know, Thanos is probably has his own little one on his hand, but I'd love oh, just yeah. to see like what – like a four-inch like, um, four like uh, Infinity Gauntlet so, that I can just buy. You are not the only person to think of that, Mike. I was thinking that Ooh. a couple weeks ago because they do the – they have the Game of Thrones Iron Throne in pop form that you can get. And oh. I was like, they should do the I gauntlet sh- because that would yeah. look beautiful on stand. And you could put the gauntlet inside of the throne and just have the the most anticipated crossover in history. <laughs> right. You, you, <laughs> all the money. All the money in the world right there in that crossover. Yeah. There you so, go. So, really that. Mike, what have you been up to? Anything good? I, I keep telling you about this trip I had, which was just – Rot full of awesome things. I buy alligator jerky. I mean, I didn't Ooh. even get to tell you that. So, but but I have I have a lot of great things going on. What about you? What what do you got going on? Well, well, Chris, uh, get your little typing fingers ready because I know how you like to uh, I know how you like to time out this podcast for for folks out there. Uh, this would be a great segue into what I was doing this weekend. Was we went and saw Pacific Rim two. Uprising in 4DX, a whole extra dimension. And that's two more dimensions than I usually see in my movies because I usually see it in 2D. So we just recorded our spoiler cast for uh, Pacific Rim 
uprising. So make sure you're subscribed. Go listen to that. We talk about in depth the theater going experience of uh, moving seats, 40x, D box, whatever you got in your uh, movie theater market out there. Uh, then we just talk about our initial impressions of the movie, and then we dive into spoiler cast. So if you haven't seen this movie, but you still want to know the in depth experience, uh, you can still safely go listen and just like pause it about halfway through. We talk about it. We talk about these seats for a little for a little while. Uh, Chris, if you had to sum up your thoughts on the seats and the movie really quickly how would you do it so um i had a good time at the movie it's mindless stupid fun for me and the seats made it that much more mindless and fun so uh from from a d-box perspective now i did not have um free water coming from my seats in my face but but mike (laughs) tell us about the uh luxurious 40x experience you uh experienced Yes, so 40X theaters are are very similar to maybe like one of those two or three minutes rides that you might experience at a theme park, but, you know, stretched out into about, you know, two hours for a movie. So it it is an experience for sure. Don't know if it's quite worth the dollar amount that we paid for it or the kind of trek I had to make to downtown Los Angeles to see it. So maybe if it was a little bit cheaper, a little bit more convenient, maybe I'd try it a little bit more. But uh, as for the film, just just wasn't as fun as the first movie in my opinion um obviously we're talking just kind of dumb robots punching so you still get that in this movie i don't i i think it's still a worthwhile watch i think you still want to see it in a theater any way you can see it maybe before it comes out digitally but you know if there's a third one if there's not a third one I just don't know if I'm going to be rushing out to see it. So uh, I'm glad I had the 4DX experience. It maybe elevated the movie more than it actually was. But, uh, yeah, interesting. And we, we talk about it for a little while. So yeah. I, I, I just can't quite condense it here. Yeah, it's definitely um, something you have to experience. But we definitely try to give you what we experienced uh, in our in our, in our uh, review episode. So if, you just, uh, if you're subscribed to us now, it will be in your feed. Listen to it. There's a time code for the spoilers. We give you plenty of heads up, so you will not be ruined if you want to still see the movie. But if you want to see it in 4DX or D-Box, you got to go this week, because next week is Ready Player One, and those seats, those theaters will switch right on over on you. So. Oh, yeah, because there's usually, if you're lucky, your theater has uh, one, one house, one room that has those seats, and I think Ready Player One is probably going to be a fun, would be a fun experience in these type of seats as well, so... Uh, Start running because uh, it, it, the weekend's already over. You're going to have to take a day off work. You're going to have to call in sick, and, and you're just going to start driving. <laughs> yeah, tell them, tell them you got the March Madness, and you got to go get, get rid of it uh, in, in a dark yeah. room. So Yeah, there you go. So, yep, you listen to a review episode and, and then go from there. But I think the biggest news this week, Mike, we got was this Deadpool 2 trailer that dropped on us kind of out of nowhere. I think it was on Monday or Tuesday, so... Uh, Deadpool 2 is around the corner. It is next... No, it's not next month yet, but it is May 18th. Are you excited for this? Yeah. Yeah, so this is just a few weeks after Infinity War, so I think they're maybe just trying to distance themselves from any time an Infinity War trailer drops. So like, oh, we might, we're probably going to have to wait a week before we show our <laughs> Deadpool trailer. So uh, we finally get to see, uh, uh, as they actually say in the trailer, the X-Force which mm-hmm. is something I was not expecting. You know, we had uh, very heavily speculated that it would eventually lead to the X-Force. We weren't sure if the X-Force was going to be its own spin-off movie or if just Deadpool 3 was going to be the X-Force and they're going to build up to it, but it sounds like they're they're doing it all here. They're they're building the team, they're making the team up. Um uh, we I don't know if we got exactly a whole lot more revealed in this trailer but b- before what we already know I know there's like a little kid uh, uh, flipping the bird that he's got to protect I think that's kind of the yeah. nugget of plot that we got from that um, Deadpool's kind of has been painted as a bad guy but i feel like he's gonna turn around and just kind of become a hard-ass good guy that's just hard to get along with so i'm kind of curious who the true villain's gonna end up being in the movie but you mean you mean cable not Deadpool. Yeah, what did I say? What did you I said say? Deadpool. Yeah. So I, you know, me, I, I, think, I, I can think, just, I can feel your root beer energy coming through the microphone. It's a. I am me, so man. drunk off this root beer, Mike. Um, I think that was the kind of the biggest thing is there. I didn't. We did not know if Cable was going to be someone who's like, I need to recruit Deadpool to do something with this kid, kill somebody, save somebody. We didn't kind of know, but it feels like Cable's on a mission to kill somebody, and Deadpool has got to be the guy who's got to maybe stop him or. Or figure out what's going on here because 
I didn't. I, I honestly had no idea. So now I'm kind of confused about where this movie's going to go and what's going to happen. But you do. You're right. We get to see X Force, and we get to see a lot of people with mutant powers, which was very kind of minimalistic in the first one. We had what Colossus, Deadpool, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, and then uh-huh. um, what the strong girl, uh, Gina Carano's character, who who fought Colossus. Yeah. That was really about it, right? Yeah, the scope of this movie definitely seems to be uh, growing, which could be a little worrisome because everyone was really digging kind of the lower budget. Even the creators of the first Deadpool movie were like, oh, yeah, we, you know, we kind of we don't want more money for the second one. We kind of like being a little scrappy, kind of relying on the humor. So um, hopefully we can still keep the kind of a core of a Deadpool, even with kind of expanding the scope here. Mm hmm. Well, I think I think having an R-rated team is 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 interesting idea, and we get to see one of Mike's favorite actors, Terry Crews, here. In, Ooh, yeah! And a nice reveal of his character. We did not know if he was going to be part of Cable Six Pack or the X Force, but here's revealed he's a character called Bedlam, who has the ability to project bio-generated electric electromagnetic pulse fields, so he can disrupt electric systems of all kinds. But it also he looks like he punches pretty hard. So. Yeah, that's all. That's really all I want to see Terry Crews do. He's such a nice dude in in uh, real life. I hope one day I have the the good fortune to meet, to meet the man. But uh, he seems super stoked to be in this movie. If you follow him on Instagram, uh, so I I want to see Terry Crews like uh, beat up some fools. So I'm really looking forward to him being part of the X Force. Yep, we also get to see what appears to be um, uh, an Asian actress with purple hair yet again in an X Men movie. Because <laughs> uh, what Blink was the same thing, I think, in, in Days of Future Past. But this is an actress uh, who will be playing the character called Surge, who can abs- her body constantly absorbs electricity. So two electric-based powers. I guess those effects are kind of cheap, maybe, to make on <laughs> film. Um, we get to see Domino. We don't really know what her powers are yet. Colossus, Negasonic Teenage Warhead are returning. But then also, we get to see uh, the kid from... Um, Taika Waititi's last movie before he did Thor, um, I can't think of his name, Julianne something, uh, be apparently the kid that Cable's trying to kill or get after or something like that. Um, yeah, he, don't know it looks like he, he is. It looks like he's got a bit of an attitude, too, because he's, like, flipping people off. He's kind of got a little bit, I think, of, like, a, kind of an emo haircut. So I feel like Deadpool is going to have a fun time with this kid because I don't think he gets along well with children. I'm really more curious of what Deadpool's motivations are because Deadpool, he's not a hero. He's not a superhero. He's just kind of like a, a douchebag with superpowers, but and he's got the quips. So I'm curious what's motivating him to save this kid. I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of... Um, uh, 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 more strings being pulled there, but yeah, yeah. I mean, this movie looks fun. There's really nothing to uh, hate on in the trailer. We just got a little bit more. Um, there was no uh, tickets revealed to be nope. sold after this movie, so I guess uh, maybe they're not too worried about breaking any uh, records on opening weekend. Um, really mm-hmm. hyping up those tickets, you know. Well, also, I think um, I, to me, I thought there was a couple of interesting moments. We get to see Dopinder return, of course, driving Deadpool around. Uh, yep. Yep. Because he breaks into the the taxi glass in the back, and um, I believe that, and I quote, um, I think he just said that he he shit himself while he was driving, so <laughs> that was interesting. And then uh, Deadpool's rant about gluten uh, whenever he sees uh, Vanessa <laughs> in the apartment was pretty entertaining. Uh, I don't know, I'm excited for Deadpool too. I mean, again, um, we not bigger is not necessarily better, but uh, there's a fun fact about this: this is the first movie Ryan Reynolds will ever receive a uh, screenwriting credit on. Oh, I don't, good I don't job, know if you've known that. He, I didn't. I didn't know he never had one before. So, oh, well, um, I'm glad. He, I mean, this is pretty. This is very much like his movie and his franchise that he's really been uh, championing, and it's made a ton of money. So you got to give him respect for sure. Um, there was a fun moment in the trailer that I liked where uh, somebody where somebody shot his hand, and then the gun <laughs> went through his hand, and then he turned it around. I really, I love the, I love the juxtap- the juxtaposition of that gruesome stuff with the, just the fun, campy jokes, because uh, that it's just kind of shocking. Like in the first movie, where he's handcuffed to Colossus and he just like cuts his hand off and falls down into like a garbage truck or something, and I was just yeah. like, what is going on? So, uh, yeah, I want to see more gruesome stuff too. You know, that's stuff that you don't quite remember until you're in the movie. So. <laughs> Yeah, this will, this should be a fun time. I I hope it's good. It's got a lot to live up to, unfortunately, which you know it's not always the best position to be in. Apparently, some of those reshoots they did a couple months ago actually added a secret cameo, and I don't think it's Stanley this time. I think 
again, I don't think it's... I saw Deadpool in Professor Xavier's wheelchair spinning around doing donuts, oh, yeah. which was pretty funny. I don't think it's an Xavier cameo. What would Who would you want to see in this movie? I know you're oh, probably thinking it's Hugh a Gambit. Hugh Jack... It's got to be Hugh Jackman. I want to see Hugh Jackman in this movie for sure. And I feel like maybe since Hugh Jackman's not connected to the Wolverine character anymore, maybe he, maybe he just plays himself in it. You know, maybe that's uh-huh. the cameo. And then maybe he's just like, wait a minute, you look familiar. You know, I'd love to see something like that. I didn't even think of that. I was going to say they're going to put Gambit in here for Mike because he's a <laughs> Gambit fan. Or, um, you know, maybe, I mean, I don't know. There's a character called Strife in the comic books, which is the evil version of uh, Cable from another universe. So oh, okay. um, maybe maybe Cable's the evil version and we don't know it. And then, and I don't know. We don't know. There's time travel involved. I'm very confused. I'm excited to see what the actual story is, Mike. So Yeah, I, I actually I, never thought about the possibility of Deadpool time traveling. Like maybe getting some of... Oh, this would be crazy. I don't think this is possible, but this would kind of be my wish fulfillment. If Deadpool kind of jacks Cable's time traveling abilities and then they jump into previous X-Men movies and they composite themselves into those scenes, you know, professionally with a big, uh, you know, Hollywood budget. Wouldn't that be crazy if Deadpool popped up in the first X-Men movie in a scene for a, for a minute? That would be amazing. So I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for that. <laughs> Maybe he jumps into Logan's final scene. <laughs> he's dying and, and does something he, he, there. he just walks by his like it's just the grave and you just he just walks by the grave and like he just like desecrates it somehow and then walk oh that'd be hilarious. he he just knocks the x <laughs> over that was on the on there so yeah uh yeah that'd be fine um yeah i don't know that's, that's that's crazy we'll have to see there's a lot of fourth wall breaking here and a lot of action going on and i i want to see it so uh we are like a month and a half away under two months i'll tell you that much and i know i'll tell you why it's two months here in a little bit mike all right. Um, but also on the bad news of, of for Deadpool is that the animated series has been scrapped because uh, Donald Glover, Stephen Glover, and Marvel have mutually agreed that there were creative differences and have, are leaving the project. So no, yep. man, I wanted that. Like my three things coalescing that I love of uh, adult animation, Deadpool, and Donald Glover. Man, it was too good to be true. That was the problem. This news yep. broke, and we were just like, "How is this happening? This is too good, oh, man. <laughs> we just we can't reach for the stars, or we'll just get burnt by the sun." That's why we haven't seen any footage yet. Is apparently because they hadn't gotten to a point where something was being made uh, because nobody could agree on anything and and they just didn't do it. So um, they didn't do that, but they did reiterate that uh, Fox and FX and Marvel are still working on Legion. They are committed to making Legion a good show and and bringing more of that. So um, maybe maybe there's life in the live action team up between FX and and Marvel until, until Disney buys them all up. So Chris, Chris, I didn't know you'd be telling me bad news today. No, I'm like, no, I'm sad. We didn't have a lot of news this week, man. So I'm, I'm doing <laughs> what, what I got. So uh, we got right. that. Uh, did you? We watched the Cloak and Dagger trailer right before this. There's a new one uh, promoting the show coming out. I believe it's this summer, right? Um, I forget. I'm gonna have to Google this while while we talk about it here. But you saw it, and I believe your um, exact um, response was, uh, "Eh, hey, Meh. yeah." I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to say superhero fatigue. But I feel like when you're putting superheroes on a TV show, you have to have a kind of a really unique concept to really get it going because TV shows have a lot of ground to cover. They have a lot of hours to cover, a lot of minutes, a lot of area to explore. So when I see this, I kind of just see kind of angsty teenagers with powers, which I feel like has been touched on in a lot of superhero TV shows already. Because surprisingly, we have a lot of these now. Uh, I think ABC Freeform possibly um, has a a superhero type show with teens. I don't think it's attached to any properties. I don't know what it's called, but I remember seeing commercials for it when I was home for the holidays a lot. Uh, So this kind of just looks a little bit more like that. Yeah, they're kind of in a unique area. New Orleans could be fun. You know, the power sets that they have are a little different. But I just don't know if there's anything for me to really grab onto here unfortunately i think this this could end up being you know a great tv show but i just don't think it's one that i'm going to watch i don't i don't know like i felt like if if cloak and dagger was going to be a movie maybe i'd be a little bit more excited because they could cast you know some big names you know they would just go maybe crazy places Uh with it but uh, i yeah i don't know i just it's hard for me to get excited for cloak and dagger man 
So as of I think yesterday or Friday, they actually screened the entire first episode at WonderCon over in Anaheim. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. apparently, people are loving this show. Not just like oh. freeform people, but apparently, the actors are really, really engaging and like have natural like charisma with them. Um, and like the world feels lived in. It's not like I, I don't know. I guess I would probably compared to what was the other show on Hulu, uh, Runaways. Uh-huh. Um, this is kind of more in the terms of like a Jessica Jones or Punisher show than Runaways. Um, oh. I mean that because- that's. That's good. I mean, I yeah, I'm definitely not yeah. wishing them ill will. It's just like, yeah. I think it's going to be harder and harder to get people excited for superhero television shows because people, I think people know now that they're not going to get the big crossovers. Captain America is not going to show up in your Cloak and Dagger show. You know, uh, Superman's never going to show up in your Krypton show sci-fi because he's not alive. He's not alive yet. So it's just yeah. kind of like, I've, they're just kind of like biding their time. <laughs> well, also this one's set in New Orleans. It's not set in um, the other big cities as well. So there's like not the New York. You're not like everything's in New York, but everything's supposedly connected, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, which is an interesting, interesting location because it's different. I, I, I just I'm at the point where I agree with you. I don't think you know there are shows out there, and the shows aren't for everybody right now. Like you can't sit down and watch every Marvel show and movie and expect to be expect to know everything and have a good time at the same time. Yeah, I think, and physically, I this, and and just physically, yeah. I don't think you can do it. I mean. Are, do you have enough hours in the day to watch all of this stuff? It's, so I guess maybe maybe they've just kind of reached that conclusion where it's just like, we're not going to get everybody to watch this show. Let's just make it for a unique market, and hopefully they like it. So all the love and hope for Cloak & Dagger. Yeah. I hope it's great, but man... <laughs> I I'm I'm assuming it'll probably drop on a streaming service when it's all done with its first season run. Maybe I'll watch it then. Yeah, I mean I I maybe maybe Disney's thing, maybe Hulu since Disney has a, a stake in Hulu. Uh, but it's only ten episodes, season one, so that's good. We don't have to you don't have to drag your way through twenty three episodes or or so <laughs> of a TV show. Uh, but the trailers to me, I mean this trailer's okay, but it's not doing it justice compared to all the the stuff I'm reading online about people actually watching the show. Because uh-huh. the the trailer is kind of just bland. It's a freeform trailer, and I'm like, Ugh, give me give me something good. So um, I, I don't know. I'm excited to watch the, at least the first episode and kind of go from there. And that debut is on June seventh, by the way. So that's coming up right around the corner. It's earlier than I thought right. it was. All right, all right. Disney also made some announcements this week uh, with some new Marvel park attractions across the world. Mike, are you excited Ooh. for more Marvel stuff at your Disneyland? Heck yeah, I am, because even though I'll criticize Disney on this show for kind of being a giant, sometimes evil, evil mega corporation, I succumb to Disneyland at least once a year because it's a lovely, magical place, and if they're going to put Spider-Man in my Disneyland park, I'm going to freak out and run there. <laughs> well, great, because yours is actually getting Spider-Man, Black Panther, Doctor Strange, and Guardians of the Galaxy rides. Oh! Oh, hell yeah. I mean, we already got the Guardians of the Galaxy ride, so yep. uh, I'm more curious about these other three, but um, this does make me excited, but since it's kind of a, a new attractions that I believe are coming somewhat recently... Um, yeah, I think they're like 2020, 2021 range is when they want to open yeah, up that. Yeah, that that's pretty soon, so it's hard for me to imagine that they're building rides as much as maybe they'll be retrofitting rides. So I don't know if I am too if, if I'm super excited for the Spider-Man ride cuz it might just be Space Mountain with maybe Spider-Man inside of Space Mountain with you. So you know, it could be one of those things cuz they do theme that ride every once in a while, but uh, I always need an excuse to go to Disneyland. So this is just another excuse for me to go. <laughs> well, I think the thing is actually they say they're new new expansions on these things, new attractions and experiences. And they plan to do more rollouts over the year, like each year add uh-huh. more like expansions to these. So I think that's really cool. So Disneyland in California is getting Spider-Man, Black Panther, Doctor Strange, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Very uh-huh. big it gets for that. Uh, Disney Paris is getting Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, and Scarlet Witch based uh, features. Okay. And Hong Kong is getting Captain America, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Hawkeye based features. Whoa, so, yeah, it makes me wonder if Paris is kind of getting uh, Iron Man, Hulk, and Thor, kind of these bigger characters, because it's um, it's in a different country, because I believe still east of the Mississippi, I think Universal Studios has the rights yeah. to those Marvel characters. I don't know how long they get to keep them for, but I mean, when you build a whole roller coaster out of steel 
for a Hulk ride, you're not just doing that on a short-term contract. So I have no idea when that's well, supposed to expire. But that's just good news for me because I'm closer to Disneyland here on the West Coast. Well, the thing is, um, Disney World in Florida and Universal are kind of benefiting off of each other right now. So I don't think mm-hmm. when Disney said we're getting Marvel, we have no plans to end our current contract with them because Universal will front the, all the stuff for for their rides and keep the Marvel stuff. And and Disney World can build like Toy Story Land and obviously the avatar land which apparently is awesome but i I, i'm not very excited about just saying that out loud so yeah i guess we'll see how that franchise pans out in in the long run Uh, um because i know disneyland out here uh is just finishing up their star wars land which i think opens maybe 2019 or the very end of this year yeah so that's good that's gonna be a whole new part of the park that i still haven't experienced yet man i'm getting superheroes i'm getting spoiled out here man yeah, I mean it's it's great. I mean, other than Star Wars was a great announcement, and now the Marvel stuff kind of taking it makes you want to go to all of them. I want to go park hopping across the globe, Mike. That's what I want. Oh, That's my park hopper pass. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're gonna see more of this as it comes out. But I thought it was really cool. They they did some artwork. Um, they released it at the thing. I don't I don't have it with me, but um, it looks like Spider Man might have a new suit, and they were just showing some concept art. So I want to see some official stuff, but that's really cool that they're doing this across the world. So that's yeah. really awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad Hawkeye's uh, getting some love. I'm I'm really loving the Hawkeye meme of like, where is he? How is he not in this movie? So he's doing all these other things like a tag movie, yeah. <laughs> we, a well, movie we got... about the game of tag. <laughs> yeah, he's in, he's doing that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. We got a little bit more. Um, Captain Marvel is filming again mike and brie larson is in her green suit filming out in public i think it's in la so if you see her tell her hi for me okay yeah i gotta go find her make sure you get a picture with her but jude law is now on set uh and he's playing the character of uh, marvell uh in this but he's just apparently just in human form in a big coat hiding what looks to be some sort of uniform under his coat it looks like it looks like some sort of special blue teal thing under his jacket there mike uh-huh. Um, I can't tell exactly what it is, but they're obviously hiding his costume for a reason in this big coat. They don't just give do him you, a big coat for no reason. Uh, do so. you think they're going to go with uh, the 616 Captain Marvel, or do you think possibly they might go Ultimate Universe Captain Marvel, which is uh, – is it, wasn't that more of an alien well, I think? Like no, a it, green, was, it was – he was technically – well, he's Rick Jones, um, which in – the six one six universe is another care. It has something else. I think they're going to go regular universe. I think I think they're uh-huh. going to go with the original one, uh, which is very important because Captain Marvel is one of those characters who died in the six one six universe, and they haven't really brought him back to life uh, because I think he died of cancer, which was like a big uh, deal. And um, yeah, he didn't die fighting like the Hulk or somebody, and they got to wish him back to life with the Dragon Balls. But like he died with cancer, so it was like a big deal. So I, I don't know what they're going to do, but. Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. Jude Law is busy playing Dumbledore now for Warner Brothers, uh, so he's a busy guy. So I don't think he can just hang around for these Marvel movies all the time. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll see him uh, kick in the bucket. Yeah, yeah, most certainly. Um, or you know, I mean, he's he's got money; he can do whatever he wants if he's in Marvel and <laughs> the, Harry Potter yeah, movies. The, and I'll be clear: the character kicking the bucket. I don't want Jude Law, Jude Law to die or anything. I just want he, needs, that to be clear. he needs to make that sky captain in the World of Tomorrow sequel. We're all clamoring. <laughs> so uh, get out there, yeah. Jude. Get out there, Jude. Get to work. Well, hopefully, if they're filming outside, we're going to see some more set photos, and, and we can take a look at them if we want. We'll we'll, we'll make that judgment call when they come around. Uh, speaking of uh, Marvel and Avengers, Infinity Wars around the corner. We mentioned this. We are less than a, we are less than a month away now, right? Are we at a month? Uh-huh. We are we are in, close. We are close. I think a month. Yeah, a month. A month. Yeah. So, um, the IMAX uh, company has put out a trailer showcasing the last trailer we saw last week and the difference between the IMAX screen and the regular screen. Now, you're saying, Chris, why are you doing this? Why are you showing <laughs> Chris, me this? Chris, why are you doing this? Why are you showing me this? Because. Avengers Infinity War is the first movie filmed entirely with IMAX cameras from a uh, blockbuster Hollywood point of view. Um, yeah, because you need you need two directors to do that. They're big ass cameras. The Russo brothers are just like slaving away with beads of sweat dripping down their face, carrying these giant ass cameras around. Yeah, well, they, they got they got one brother behind the camera directing everyone, and one up front directing the actors. That's, I mean, these things are three stories tall, Mike. You imagine the actors they're dealing with on these? They got to be tall people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so IMAX put out this um, thing showing the screen's different size here because you get a you get a taller frame. It's the same width but much taller, and you can see here in the side by side of how much more 
you're actually seeing if you see the IMAX version, which I would recommend doing so if you get the opportunity. Um, the, the biggest thing about this, though, is if you look at the one on the right, it's got a different color tone to it, like a reddish hue, um, which is yeah, a, little, a little weird. Yeah, a little bit. I can see that. I wonder if maybe that's... Um something that they have to do when they project it onto a screen, maybe when you're filling a larger theater. Maybe the actual, like, uh, screen, like the, the white fabric, maybe that just holds mm. a, a red a little bit differently, you know? It could also be the bulb uh, hue. The bulb color temperature may be different as well. So mm-hmm. uh, seeing it on the screen seeing it on the screen's a little different, but you can tell you're going to see a little bit more screen here. And I think it's very noticeable in the uh, scene with Gamora walking uh, with, with Thanos. Uh, Cause you, the original one kind of cuts his head off a little bit on this one. You get to see the whole body. So um, I'm really excited to watch this in IMAX, Mike. And, and if you guys are wondering what the difference is, this will show you the entire trailer in regular and IMAX. So you can see side by side what's going on. So uh-huh. th- that's really cool. There's also starting to put out 23 character theater standees. So, I mean, I know you like to get your picture in front of those standees, right, Mike? Isn't yeah, this thing's freaking do? this thing's freaking huge. I can only imagine all of the all of the people out there pining to uh, get this once the movie's out of theaters, but like their wives are going to hate them because they're like, uh, "Sorry, I I invaded our entire living room with this giant Avenger standee and now I don't know what to do with it." And then of course, or, he's just going to husband Yes, that's true. So if your wife brings this home, be careful, (laughs) because what's going to happen is she's just going to cut Captain America out of it and put that in the bedroom and throw everything else away. But if your husband brings this home, he's just going to cut out – he's either going to cut out the Scarlet Witch, which is just a little bit up in the corner, but it's going to be Black Widow probably. So maybe just uh, compromise, and you both can have your own cardboard cutouts to look at in the bedroom. Well, one of you needs to get this one, and the other one can have the other one for Avengers 4 is what I'm thinking. (laughs) Yeah, get the matching set. Uh, but there are 23 characters on this, minus Hawkeye. Mike, where's Hawkeye? Where is he? What's he uh, doing? I don't know. What is Hawkeye doing, man? I don't know. But here's a fun fact about Jeremy Renner. He was had to turn down the newest Mission Impossible because he filmed on these movies for a year, both of them. So uh-huh. he is not – he's in this movie. They're just not promoting him. And I think he might have a new costume that we're not seeing yet. So, Ooh, um, which is probably Ronan. I think it's probably going to be yes. Ronan. He's probably going to be all macked out in a suit with swords, like kicking ass. Uh, he's going to be like deus ex, deus ex machina, like jumping in, like slicing aliens' heads off. I'm looking forward to it. it sounds yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. So like he, his, his scene in was Civil War where he takes down the Vision for a couple seconds was really cool. So uh, I, I look forward to his uh, appearance in this. So we'll, we'll definitely see what it is. Also, warning, clips and scenes are starting to debut online. So if you want to no! not see any scenes, stay away from the internet. <laughs> Run, you thought you were safe because the movie was coming out a week sooner. It's, oh man, I'm going to have to go down to my spoiler cave. Yeah, we need to start building those plugins like that turn spoilers off on the internet for all web browsers. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, there's a new TV spot um, with new footage. There's a, a, a whole scene from a movie. Um I think it's like the one where Thor wakes up. So avoid the internet. Just stop, stop it. We got to stop now. This is it. This throw is the your, warning. We have a month your, of no internet. Throw, yeah, just throw your computers away. <laughs> yeah, turn, uh, stop paying for the internet for a month. You'll be fine. Yeah. And then uh, sad news is Chris Evans may be done with the Marvel Cinematic Universe after his reshoots for Avengers Four. Mike, do you think he's done, or do you think he's just saying that? I don't know. You can't trust Chris Evans because he was. He said he was done a while ago, but. At the same time, it would make sense for him to just kind of like wrap things up after you kind of close out his like final phase. I don't think anyone would be surprised. It'd be sad to see him go, but he did such a good job as Cap. Um, I I think he kind of wants to get into like directing. He wants to try other things out there in the movie universe. He's definitely done his time, cut his teeth in this giant uh, box office franchise. He's like a he's a household name now, especially since there's so many other famous Chris's out there that he has to compete with. Um, um, and you know the up and coming Chris Dillard out there. You know he's pretty, he he's yeah. pretty uh he's hitting he's hitting up the scene. So um. Now, I think the biggest question comes to, does that mean he's dying in the, in the fourth movie? It could be possible, um, but we'll have to it, wait and see what happens. It could definitely be possible, or it could be one of those things where they kind of fade into white, and you know they can bring him back whenever they need him to later. Like He could be a team-up or a cameo later on. 
uh, without really killing him, and he's just like, yeah, he's doing his own thing, kind of thing. I don't, I don't know. I mean, no, we're all gonna cry. We're gonna cry because they're gonna bury him next to Agent Carter's grave, and we're just gonna be like, no. We're all gonna cry in the movie theater like big old babies. Yep, yeah, so many, so many tears. But Robert Downey Jr. said the same thing where he was out after like Iron Man or Avengers two, and they keep bringing him back for more movies. So we're well, just like, oh, Disney's like, it would be a shame if I left this dump truck of gold and jewels next to your house in in the in the in the Malibu coastline. We're gonna oh. build you Tony Stark's house for yourself. Wink, yeah. Wink. Oh what. Oh, what's this on top of all of these priceless artifacts? Oh, a script for another Avengers movie? Oh, okay. That's uh, yeah, what happens. So I, that's, that's, that's how exactly Hollywood how it works. works. <laughs> yeah, Mike knows. He's got he's got sources out there. So um, I don't know. We may see him come back, but I've heard people talk before just to kind of give you an impression that they may die in the movie, though. So uh, we'll, we'll go either way. Han Solo is out in two months. That's how I know Deadpool is out in less than two months, Mike. Um, they, they like to remind you that the movie's going to debut in two months. And I found out that Phil Lord and Chris Miller, even though they worked on the movie a lot up until Ron Howard took over, they have decided to take an executive producer credit on the film for the final product. So Good. Give um, them something. I mean, well, they, it, it seems think, like they influenced the film a little bit, I guess. I think they, they were offered maybe possibly a story or writing credit, but decided to do the EP credit since the final version is maybe not what they exactly were working on to begin with. So mm, um, that makes it sense. sounds like, it sounds like a resolution achieved by everybody. So that's, that's cool. You know, whatever they're not, they're not out there complaining about it. They're, they're doing their own thing, I guess. I don't know what they're doing. What are they doing? I think I think they're making more Lego movies, to be honest. Probably more Lego movies. Uh, 24 and a half Jump Street or something like that. Is that the next one? <laughs> 24 and a half Jump Street crosses over with Men in Black and Legos. Yes. It's all the whole – the crossover is done in Lego form. That's what it is. There. Ooh, yeah. that'd be awesome. Yeah, they don't have to hire real actors. They can just <laughs> do the voices. I mean, you've been watching Gotham, right? You're all caught up on all the episodes. <laughs> Chris, don't don't be facetious. Okay, you know I'm, I'm not, not watching. Sorry. You know, you know, I'm not watching Gotham. <laughs> I know they keep telling us that this character named Jerome, who came up in like season one, is not the Joker, but he's totally the Joker. And now this new set photo, one of them at least shows him in the purple suit and hat, much like Jack Nicholson's Joker, right? If you were to like, hey, this is this is the Joker, a flashback from Batman '89's Joker, would you say, yeah, that's him? Yeah, it's looking like him. <laughs> yeah, he's a joker. Like, stop, stop trying to lie to us. He's the joker. And then another photo shows him robbing a bank in what appears to be full joker makeup and with a shotgun. And I don't know. Like, they keep saying he's not, but he totally is. And they just need to stop doing that and just go ahead and commit to it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Is this working out for the show? If anybody out there is watching Gotham, uh, reach out and let us know if uh, you're liking the inclusion of this proto joker. Yeah, apparently he's not supposed to be the proto Joker. He's supposed to not be. I don't. I don't know. He's the Joker. There's no proto Joker. He is the Joker. Just, just cut it out, people. Fox, <laughs> go ahead and commit to it. Just. Stop, Chris is saying. It. Chris is saying, knock it off, folks. Just give me the Joker. Yeah, just just say what it is. Don't say. Well, it might be. I don't know. It's uh, uh. Rick and Morty. <laughs> you like the show? Oh uh, man, you know I love Rick, Rick and Morty. Season four isn't confirmed or like saying they're gonna do it yet mike are you sad to hear that yet uh, yeah i heard that earlier this week um dan Harmon, one of the co-creators of rick and morty was on uh kevin smith's uh podcast this week i listened to it really great podcast because i'm a fan of uh, dan Harmon's work and i love to know how he kind of got his start and how his mind works but uh he kind of briefly mentioned that um it's down to contract negotiations. So it doesn't seem like they're just kind of twiddling their thumbs waiting for a phone call from Adult Swim saying like, hey, let's make another one of seasons of these because it's obvious they're going to crank out the show again because it's it's such a, a huge, huge ratings uh, booster for Adult Swim. But so I guess... You know, once you get to about the fourth season of a TV show, you know, contract negotiations come up, contracts get renewed, people want more money, the show gets more and more expensive. I heard from um, from somebody that works for Nickelodeon that says this is how uh, a lot of animation works out there. Once your show starts to get more and more expensive, you got to recoup that money other places or your show might get canceled even if it's great. So you might be seeing a lot more Rick and Morty like video games and like t-shirts and merchandise maybe to offset the 
more money that they have to pay the creators, which the creators totally deserve. The, 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 this show should get all of the money because I love it so much, but that's why it takes a little while for season four, which is unfortunate because because animation takes a while. So as soon as it gets confirmed, they still got to start drawing it and writing it. So we might not see more Rick and Morty till maybe 2020 or late 2019, which kind of sucks because I love it and I want it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is sad because, I mean, here's the thing, like, I don't know if you knew this, but the season three finale in October drew the highest ratings for Adult Swim ever. So, yeah, and like, also, like, it's great for Adult Swim, and I think also Rick and Morty is one of the best shows for, like, a certain age demographic, and I think it's what, like, uh, men from, like... Yeah, and I think it's, like, the best show hitting that market, like, than any other show out there. So this show is definitely bringing in the advertising revenue. Yeah, it was the most watched show on the day it came out in adults 18 to 34 and 49. Yeah, that's huge. (laughs) It just wiped the floor clean for season three, and it is a good show. And, you know, honestly, they've been doing some cross... There's the Old Spice, I think, ads they did. So they're bringing in money. Like, hey, make us a Rick and Morty ad for burger king i think or i believe this was another one i believe they just did a music video with uh the rapper run the logic uh yeah run the jewels and i thought they did something with logic too or maybe i'm thinking or maybe i'm conflating two different ideas uh but either way um if you've never seen rick and morty i know the fan base seems like they can get a little <laughs> obnoxious and a little crazy which is true so don't let that turn you off you can watch this show without you know interacting with those uh people in the fan base but rick and morty is just amazing and i love it and um i can i can't recommend it enough to anybody out there so it's not a kid's show though it's adults adults only kids out of the pool (laughs) yeah yeah also their mcdonald's craze was huge like i don't know i think i think adult swim it would be stupid it's been stupid not to just be like okay let's work this out sooner than later rather than probably being like yeah we want to pay you the same we did for your six episode season one for a, a season four that's making us look at me i i don't know i don't know the details but i'm kind of sad so they should probably pull this all together mike get it together yeah get all your you shit in the bag Rick. get it together and fix it <laughs> it's a reference uh yeah, dragon ball you. super have you been watching the new dragon ball super tv series <laughs> oh that's revitalized dragon ball for a new this age uh this Dragon Ball nostalgia has been really crazy because I felt like once kind of GT went off the air in the States, you know, when, once, you know, obviously uh, Japan hit that stride a long time ago, but once it kind of went off the air in America, you know, it was just kind of like a, a slow, steady stream of Dragon Ball with like, uh, like video games here and there. Every once in a while, there'd be like a one-off movie that would come out. But then, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people kind of aged out of Dragon Ball. But then they're now they're trying to, they're coming back because they want the nostalgia. And then all of a sudden, hey, guess what? You want Dragon Ball? How about new video games? New video games. We're giving you a new series. We're making more movies. This shit's crazy. So I cannot keep up with any of this. There's apparently like Super Saiyan forms I've never heard of before with like blue hair. There's like silver hair. I don't know what happened to the big old monkeys. I don't know if that's a thing anymore. No, uh, no, Dragon people, Ball GT doesn't count anymore. They they wipe that clean. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is I have no earthly idea what is going on anymore. <laughs> so I think Dragon Ball Z ended in like 2002, 2003 in America. And uh-huh. um, there were, again, video games kind of sparsely. Here's a fighting game for your PlayStation. You know, here's one for the Xbox, whatever. And then in 2013, they created a new movie with the actual, the guy who, created Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, uh, they did a movie and they opened it back up into this universe that picks up with Dragon Ball Z and just kind of wiped out GT completely. It doesn't exist anymore. And uh, the way it works is, uh, and that was like five years ago now, but they've already had 130 episodes in Japan. So this nostalgia has been going on for a couple years now with with new (laughs) movies and, and bringing back the characters. But apparently... There's the, either the show's wrapping up in Japan, uh, Super is, or they're taking a hiatus because of animation things. I don't know. So they're putting out a movie later this year, and I just was wanting to get kind of get your take on the animation here because it looks to be a cleaner, older animation style kind of going on in this. It, yeah, it doesn't th- look like what's going on currently in the TV show, but I wanted to see what you thought of it. Yeah, that's usually what happens when uh, kind of anime gets movies is when once you get a higher budget, 
uh, with an animation crew, uh, you just get a lot more time and energy that you get to focus on every aspect of uh, the pipeline. So I noticed when I saw this trailer, the backgrounds look amazing, which means they have more background painters that maybe are doing it traditionally, or maybe they're just getting more hours to focus into all the detail. Uh, maybe they're they're not worried about reusing backgrounds or scenes. They're just like, write whatever you want in that script. We'll paint it because we got the money. Uh, the more frames of animation. I think uh, anime animates on threes. Uh, sometimes, which is uh, pretty, can sometimes look pretty choppy. So they, they could be animating on ones, which is makes it look super fluid. Uh, adding more highlights and shadows to every frame. So that's that's kind of when you get all the budget coming in and everything looks really good. So if you've ever seen like an animated movie and wonder why it looks better than your animated TV show, it's just because they do all the same stuff, but just so much more effort goes into each thing. So uh, I had no idea what's going on in this trailer. Uh, Goku is powering up, and he punches some another we, we, fist nope. that kind of looks like it might be Goku. I don't know what's going on. The, the, the beauty of this is nobody knows because they've not unveiled anything about this movie other than it's a Dragon Ball Super movie, and that's it. Um, so there's a lot, there's not a lot going on. This will probably come out in Japan later this year. And like, I don't know what the turnaround time is for dubbing, uh, and I guess reanimating for English, but it may be a year or two before we see it over here. But uh, I'm actually just, I just started the Dragon Ball Super TV show, um, watching it, Mike. And I, I've got to say, I'm really enjoying it. If you like the, if you like Z and your child of Z, the people who were watching that are now making Super and it just feels good to kind of be back in there. It feels like it catches that old old hmm. feeling of watching z growing up so yeah I might, um, I might i might have to catch a couple episodes that that might it, be something fun to to binge watch when my wife isn't home because she would have no idea what's going on and she would not care she'd be like what are these spiky haired people doing why are they screaming for 30 minutes like well he's powering up he's going to he's gonna attack in the next episode you just gotta wait <laughs> yeah they, they, they fixed a lot of that thankfully and the uh, 1080 resolution is definitely better to watch these shows in now so <laughs> Can't can't can can affirm that. So Dragon Ball Super movie trailer in our show notes. Go click it out. Uh, we'll we'll I'll fill you in on the other stuff, Mike. After you watch this, I need you to go watch the movie Battle of Gods first, and then then we'll okay. we'll talk. Uh, gotcha. Men in Black uh, has another casting announcement with Tessa Thompson, who played Valkyrie in Thor Ragnarok, will be re teaming up with Chris Hemsworth for Men in Black spinoff. Hey, so, that's cool. Tessa Thompson was uh was great in Thor Ragnarok, so uh, she's in everything just, these days. Yeah. I don't know what they're going to do with this Men in Black universe. I don't know if it's a soft reboot, if it's a reimagining, if it's a continuation, if it's a spinoff. It's a spinoff. Uh, who knows? It's uh, a confirmed spinoff. So you say that every week, and it's a confirmed spinoff. So well, good. you know, so when I say the words, who knows, it's proverbially, it's Chris that knows. So you tell it's, me. I do so know. that's why I yeah. keep bringing it up. You're, you're my crutch, Chris. I don't have to remember things when you're around. It's okay, because I'm going to leave you on our last bit of news here, because I know nothing about this last topic here. <laughs> It's a, apparently a TV, a web series that's debuting on YouTube Red. Right? So, yeah, movie. So, th- so this is a, a, an interesting bit of news. Uh, I believe I learned about this announcement a while ago, but then it kind of dropped off of my brain. And then uh, this week, YouTube Red dropped some trailer announcements for some new shows coming out. So if you recall the movie that came out in 2008 called Jumper, it uh, starred Hayden Christensen, as we all know from the Star Wars prequels who basically played a character who could kind of teleport. And, uh, you know... Samuel L. Jackson uh, uh, was in it. Yeah, Sam Jackson's in it. And basically, a movie happens uh, where characters are teleporting. Uh, Sam Jackson's trying to catch them. There's good teleporters, bad teleporters. Uh, This movie did not do well. I don't believe it made a lot of money. Uh, The critics didn't like it. Uh, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I fondly remember liking this movie. So I, with the caveat of saying I need to go rewatch it to see if it still holds up, I liked Jumper. And for a while, there was a sequel plan. And obviously, when a movie is not good and doesn't make money, you don't get a sequel. So um, uh, Jumper was a movie that came out of a novel series uh, from Stephen Gould. I've never read any of, the bo- any of the books, but that's what it was based on. It was based off a series of novels. So there's other material out there to make these movies. So I guess if you just wait 10 years, uh, YouTube Red will come around and make a series. So we're getting a, a new spinoff series from the Jumper universe called Impulse, which is apparently based on the third book in the Jumper series. So the trailer's out now. You can go watch it on YouTube. It's going to come to YouTube Red. And um, 
there's not a whole lot here actually connecting it to the Jumper movie. So I don't know if there's going to be callbacks within the series or if there's going to be similar terms. I think the word paladins thrown around talking about these characters that can jump around. So I don't know if that kind of nomenclature is going to make it into the series. But in the trailer, we kind of see this young woman kind of struggling with these uh, these uh, new abilities that she's gained. And uh, looks like she's in a, a new environment, a new school. She might be getting bullied. She looks like she might be a little bit of a, a rebel running around with like gas mask spray painting stuff. And it's not until like the very end of the trailer do you actually see her teleport a bit for a second. And the teleportion... The teleporting effects look very similar to what you saw in the 2008 Jumper film. So, you know, I got a little bit of it. I got a little excited. I've been wanting to see more Jumper stuff happening. Happening, uh, but I think the the bigger thing you pull out of this news is that this isn't just some rinky dinky YouTube Red show. You know, a lot of people out there have like heard the term YouTube Red thrown around. I don't think they have any big hit killer smash series out there just yet. Uh, but now they're really cranking it into gear, and this uh, Impulse series is going to be directed by Doug Lyman, who <laughs> directed The Born Identity and Edge of Tomorrow, two movies that we love. So, uh, I mean, the, the talent is here. I mean, I think maybe you just hopefully look past the YouTube Red label that really hasn't proven itself yet, and imagine if this was possibly on Netflix or Amazon or HBO, maybe we'd have maybe a, a different conversation right now, but... I went and checked on the trailer just recently, and I saw it was 26 trending on YouTube. I don't really know what that means. I don't know how the trending algorithm well, works on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube can bump their own ratings for their own shows, so I'm, I'm not yeah, going to put too much faith in that right now. I'm kidding. Yeah, I could totally see that happening, but I mean, for a relatively, I don't want to say obscure movie, but no one talks about Jumper anymore, so I'm surprised that they're making a series, so... I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a promise here and now that I'm going to rewatch Jumper at some point in time in the future, and I I will report back and see if it holds up. And I I I'm gonna you can always check out the first episode of every YouTube Red series for free. You don't have to sign up to watch it. So I'm at the very least gonna be watching the first episode of Impulse, and I'll watch Jumper. And I don't know maybe I'll get maybe I'll convince you to go back and revisit Jumper if you haven't seen it yet I, or haven't seen it. In I a while. watched it in, I watched it in theaters, Mike, and I've not gone back since. And there's there's a, <laughs> well, reason, there's a reason for that. So well, I I think I'm gonna try to convince you, and maybe we'll 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 turn it into a little bit of a review spoiler cast segment where we'll watch the first episode of impulse and then we'll watch jumper we'll just mash it into one review and we'll just talk about it and just decide if i'm a crazy fool or not and this is a <laughs> crazy idea and why am i even talking about any of this <laughs> it's, it's true you are pretty crazy um i did i just did a quick search here apparently the book jumper has uh four books jumper reflex impulse and exo but the movie is not based on any of those. They added a fifth book based on the characters in that movie. So, oh, okay. <laughs> so this one may not be even tied to the movie Jumper. It may just be on those books based on Jumper. So uh, we're gonna. Have, I guess I'll have to watch it to find out, Mike, to see if it all. Yeah, connects. that's right, Chris. And uh, at the end of the trailer, it just says coming soon. So I would imagine maybe at some point this year, or maybe sooner than summer. So. If you guys want to see a, a, a Jumper retrospective with a, a review of the first episode of Impulse, uh, tweet at Chris and oh, just, no. <laughs> just badger him because he's going to be the one that's going to have to agree to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to have to badger me quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, that, that's I mean that's it for our show, Mike. I mean, thank you for bringing up Impulse and YouTube Red to our to our radar. Yeah, because we, 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 we were going to Red. Yeah, so. well, we were going to talk about uh, the Karate Kid until we realized that none of us can intelligently talk about the Karate, karate <laughs> yeah. Kid. Because, like I said, there were some other YouTube trailers, YouTube Red trailers that dropped this week. And uh, Cobra Kai is, is the big one because uh, YouTube won a bidding war for that series. So Netflix was trying to grab it. I think Amazon was trying to grab it. Then YouTube came in and says, uh, we got the Google money, so we're going to go ahead and buy this uh, Karate Kid uh, continuation. I guess it's technically a sequel, but they're following the, the, bad, the bad guy character in it. I don't know. I have um, – I don't know if I want to say um, – Sadly, because I, I can't speak for it, but I've never seen Karate Kid. I don't know if it's too late and I can't watch it now because I'm not a kid anymore and I'm not going to like it, but... <laughs> it, well, it's one of those things. I don't recall watching the Karate Kid in full growing up either, so I think we may have missed it, Mike. It may have been a little yeah. earlier for us, but we, I remember watching what, Three Ninjas. Yeah, Three Ninjas? I was yeah, a, I was a Three Ninjas kid. Uh, I watched, you know... 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies and cartoons. So yeah. we were ninja kids growing up, just not Karate Kid ninjas growing up. No, no. Ninjas are cooler than karate. That's all I'm trying to say here. <laughs> well, not Teenage Mutant Karate Turtles, are they? No, they're not. So <laughs> I, I agree. We, we cannot talk intelligently about it. And you're going to tell us, hey, why haven't you seen it? I, I, I've seen too many parodies and too many just clips of the movie to and go back and re- enjoy it as it is, I think. So... Uh, give me another 20 years and maybe I'll come back and, and take a look. And yeah, Chris so. has got to work on his skills before he can sweep the leg. See, that's all we know. That's it. That's the extent <laughs> of our knowledge. We, yeah. We, yeah, that's all we know. That's thank we you, got. young grasshopper. Uh, <laughs> let's let's wrap this up, Mike. If people want to know what you're doing and want to see what's up, where can they find you at? Well, if they want to watch me wax on and wax off, they can follow me <laughs> at Mike. <laughs> they can follow me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter, and they can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to watch you train and watch you see uh, Nab the fly out of the sensei's hand, I think this is all from the same movie. I actually don't know. <laughs> uh, I saw I saw the Karate Kid movie with uh, Jackie Chan and uh, Will Smith's kid. That was fun. I mean, I know that was like a remake, totally different. But uh, Chris, where, anyway, I'm belaboring the point. Chris, where they can where can they find you? You're well, going you to see. Well, you can watch TV me too. not waxing <laughs> off on Twitter <laughs> at Valdan V A L D A N because that's what I thought Mike was gonna say, and I'm like, oh, he better not say it. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can also head over to YouTube and search the DNN, see the videos we do there. We've just filmed a bunch of actual stuff last week. I need to sit down and edit that. Those those take a little bit of time as well. And uh, head over to Comic UI, and we're going to be doing some interviews at C2E2 in the next couple weeks. I think it's the first full weekend of April, the seventh, the sixth, seventh, and eighth. So really excited to get up there. Uh, Mike, if people want to maybe listen to our review of the D-Box and 40X uh, theater experience, where can they find more of Superhero Slate at? Well, as always, please visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues that we host our show. And if you want to check out our awesome show notes. So uh, if you want to check out that trailer for that side-by-side comparison of Avengers Infinity War and IMAX, we got that in our show notes. If you want to look at that, uh, how the Joker is now looking on Gotham, because... We know you're probably not watching Gotham, but maybe you want to check out the screenshot. We got that in our show notes, so you can check that out at SuperheroSlate.com. And you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher. You can get us right in your email inbox every week, and you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to get Superhero Slate merch, you can get that at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. If you're a fan of the show, please consider leaving us a review wherever you listen. We like those stars. We like those likes. We like the thumbs up. We like the retweets. We love all that stuff. Uh, we love the feedback. So if you want to reach out and give us your opinions, uh, we will take those into consideration. And, uh, you know, if you're if you're clever enough and we like you and you're nice and respectful, maybe we'll, we'll even read your responses on the show. Um, if you want to be a super fan of the show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we will be here every week, sometimes twice. We are at bated breath waiting for that Infinity War to drop so we can go watch it. <laughs> I, I keep I keep hoping that it doesn't leak online early. That's all my hopes oh are for this one. So. Oh, God, I hope not. So, All right, well, that's a, a, another episode, Mike, and I guess we'll see everybody next week. All right, goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm drinking some balls. I got balls in my mouth right now. Oh, no one's ever made that pun before, Chris.